We're live from CKLU. Deke's here. Hey guys. <laughs> I had it on do that. Uh -huh. I know, I swear I did. Okay, you're gonna have to lower your mic, Deke. Okay. <laughs> That's better. <laughs> I didn't spend all this time doing my quad without touching that. anything. Do not disturb. It's on. Okay, you just wanted a witness. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. oh. Yeah. Okay. So I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have been that guy. Yeah, that's fine. I don't understand. Yeah. I know we're having all kinds. You're just of a popular problems. guy. Yeah. They get through to do not disturb. <laughs> this would be that hashtag behind the scenes part. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, no swearing. <clears throat> So this is not a Flying for Flavor podcast. No, this is sponsored by Laurentian University. Obviously, we're drinking coffee. Wow. Yeah. Oh, coffee. McDonald's coffee. <laughs> it's just in a cup. No one knows <laughs> in it. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I need coffee today. For those of you who uh, listen to the Flying for Flavor podcast, I'm also taping the audio of this entire interview and it'll be uploaded as a bonus episode later this week. Just an FYI. No one's seen Deke's head in here. You're being like this? Yeah, they make some movements sometimes so we know that there's like all of us here. Go tell them they have to look at my page to see me. <laughs> but I can't see Stephanie in there. I know, that's why I'm going like this. Hello! Sorry, dude, I'm not clear on that. Technical where difficulties. Where's my go? Oh, whatever. <laughs> I tagged you. So you exist. exist. <laughs> In spirit. <laughs> I don't know why I thought that you like. Oh, it's very worldly of you. Pardon? Very worldly of you. <laughs> That's what I was going for. If you want to listen to this live on the radio, it's 96.7. I was just talking to my live piece. Oh, okay. Boss Talk on CKLU 96.7 FM. Boss Talk is a show dedi dedicated to bring you insight, advice, and straight up hard truth from people who take ownership of their life every day. Every week I sit down with someone new to talk about their journey and provide a real live conversation to inspire, educate, and hopefully entertain you. My name is Michelle Galant and I will be your host for the next hour. Good morning on this beautiful Tuesday morning in downtown Sudbury. It's been very much. <laughs> um, the forest fire situation has uh, has kind of contained itself, so I'm happy about that. We got a lot of we got a lot of rain last week, um, so that is pushing us into a good situation. As we, I want I don't want to even want to say end the summer because I feel like it's just getting started um, because we've had like incredible weather. But I'm not going to go on and on and on and talk about the weather because we only have an hour and I have two guests today who are going to be talking about a lot of fun stuff. So you, if you live in the greater Sudbury area or in the world when you're listening, you, you might even have caught some of the episodes. <laughs> no pressure. No pressure no, 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 no. at all. So today I have in the studio, Miss Stephanie Pichet. Hey. And Deke. Hey guys. What's going on? So you guys, let's go back a little bit. I'm first going to introduce you guys. If you guys have not heard of uh, Stephanie Piche, she has created this worldly brand for herself, I will say, and uh, she owned a catering business for about eight years, and if you've never met her, I'm sure she has fed you at some point in your life, and you might have not even known it, and it was probably one of the best meals you have eaten. Gosh, no pressure. No pressure at all. Since then, she has closed the Legacy Catering doors, 
and opened up uh, a new brand for herself and started a podcast documenting her journey as she travels the world, and that is not exaggerating, she travels the world, sampling, tasting, eating the best foods and wines and giving you travel tips along the way on her online blog and podcast, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a hard life. It, yeah, it sounds hard. Um, I don't even know how you do, how you do it. Um, since then, you have expanded your podcast and opened up the doors to some people to join you on this journey. Yep, like this guy to my left. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We needed somebody who could put up with the three chatty girls in the studio. So, oh, well, it's you need to see. I, yes. <laughs> so, let's talk about your background, Derek. I'm going to call you Derek. Sure. <laughs> Is there anything you don't want me to call you? You Derek. <laughs> <laughs> right. Geek. Um, so your background, actually, you have a very um, expandable culinary background as well. Right. right. So tell us about you. Well, uh, I founded my own company uh, three years ago with a passion. It's called Zara Small Batch, and it pretty much just combined all the things I was really, really good at. I just next leveled it. I, I ended up getting into catering as well. It's been three years now, and uh, specializing in Mediterranean fusion. Um, exploring components of Spanish, French, uh, Italian cuisine and combining it with, with what I know from, from my Arabic uh, culinary background. Uh, further, I branded my own line of hummus called Zayas Hummus found at Smith's Markets and I pretty much make the hummus for Smith's Markets but that way but I'm also getting into school nutrition programs, fundraising. I've been exploring with that for the past year as well. So um, yeah, so I, I kind of bring to the team and for Flying the Flavor just kind of that culinary background uh, sense of jackassery and uh that's not a swear i'm allowed to say that i'm allowed <laughs> so, i gave you the luck you, you play that you can play it in scrabble i guess if it's in the dictionary i've been playing a lot of scrabble lately that's legal. okay that's legal. Legal. all right so we are live i'm live on my personal facebook page we're live on stephanie's Pichet's facebook page i invite you guys to join in the conversation check out um what's going on in the studio so Flying for Flavor, as you mentioned, is the podcast. Stephanie, why don't you just get back to the beginning of this, of why you started this in the first place? I think the idea of the podcast, first of all, I'm a big podcast junkie myself. Um, some people learn by watching, some people learn by doing, and some people learn by listening. I'm an auditory learner. That's my, that's my thing. <clears throat> Mostly because I'm a habitual multitasker. So the idea of being able to listen to a book or someone teach me something while I'm actually doing something else. Yes, I know there's all these people out there that are gonna, you know, <clears throat> message me and tell me you shouldn't be multitasking, you don't do things properly. That's how I get things done. So I decided to take that idea of teaching and talking about certain topics or the things that I was learning along the way and putting them into an auditory podcast. Not to mention, it was easier to convince other people to join me <laughs> at the beginning when I was telling them that it was no video required. Right. So we've had uh, so previous episodes. Uh, you may not have known that you know occasionally a uh, one of the flavor crew would show up in her pajama bottoms, not naming names. <laughs> um, <Was it> so <laughs> and if she's listening right now, she's. Uh, it's even better. Sometimes she has to put. We have to tell her you have to put pants on today. <laughs> <laughs> to put pants on so it's a big thing that she has to come into the studio and big joke but uh, we're looking at turning it into more of a video and audio thing starting in the fall but it's been um, a big change from when it was just me sitting in a studio by yourself as you know Michelle you're basically talking to the wall talking to yourself <laughs> reading off notes it doesn't have the same energy uh, doesn't have the same level of excitement and conversation that comes about by talking to somebody else and not to mention, I was pretty much drinking alone if I was sampling a wine, so that's sad. And they say you shouldn't do that. They, sh they say that. Who's they, though? <laughs> I don't know. That's not how I live my life. Right. But, but it is much more fun to share what you're consuming. So every week uh, when we're having a show, we're usually featuring a wine, a beer, a cocktail, mm -hmm. something uh, that we want to sort of promote or give a shout out to. Uh, and then there's always links in the show notes how you can basically grab it on your own on the weekend, and then you can kind of listen along and... And simple and drink along with you. Or we can still drink with <laughs> friends and listen to us. Can you imagine everyone sitting around together listening to a podcast? I mean that's pretty It's a pretty it's a pretty in depth show. I mean I mean we, we can't undermine that. You even go to often it's from breweries or wineries that Correct. you've visited. Yes. As well. So I mean you 
you have that shadow of, of the brand and et cetera, and yeah, we're all sampling, we give our opinions, but there's also that storyline and that foundation of where it comes from. Yeah, okay, like, hey, I just got back from there, or I just had a chat with this winemaker, or, um, you know, hey, this is one of my new great, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I do a lot of that, visiting <laughs> yeah. yeah. winemakers and well, brewers. Actually, and, we have a lot of material, which is, which is good. Yeah, well, I mean, the whole world of food, wine, and travel, there's so much to talk about mm -hmm. that we never run out of topics to discuss part of the problem is just scheduling it all in yeah. so it's not always just me or just Deeks there's four of us that are co-hosts on the show right. and we kind of mix and match depending on who's available it's mostly me until I can get one of them to learn teach them how to use all the, the mixer and all the other stuff yeah. so they can take over when I'm not there but I don't know about letting the three of them kind of play without me. I don't know what's going to happen on the show. So let's talk about that. When you were, when you kind of separated yourself from just doing it on your own to expanding the team, how did you choose and who are the other um, team members? Um, I, well, it started off with uh, Cynthia lozel because she's uh, not just a friend of mine, but she's a wedding and event professional who has a hospitality restaurant background. She also wears no pants. And she also wears no pants sometimes. <laughs> and, and she's fun and she's chatty and we just, we have a mind meld when we're talking about things like this. And we're not afraid to disagree, which I love that fact mm -hmm. that she can disagree with me and, you know, we're still mm -hmm. friends and that's the kind of friendship we have. <laughs> yeah. But uh, we were out, I think it was the last fall at some point, and we were all sitting at this big local fundraiser, and then Stacy Bonner sat with us that time. And again, wine was flowing, um, <laughs> and we got along really well, and I messaged her, I think, a couple days later, and I just said, you know, it was really great knowing you the day. Uh, any chance you want to be on a podcast in January? Because she is a travel agent, a pastry chef. What else is she? She used to sell, be a sales rep for wineries as well as breweries. Right. Uh, she's got basically hits all those check marks. Well, then she goes to a different extreme and she's a therapist as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, th that's for us for after parties. <laughs> <laughs> it's a yeah. background as well, too. But she's, she's, she's she is. She's one of those multitaskers, which is, I think we all have that multitasking. Yeah. We just, we love what we do. We're all like serial entrepreneurs in yeah. a way. So I think it's, um, so Cynthia's got Jack Randa events as her main thing, mm -hmm. her main business. Uh, besides the fact that she also holds down a full-time job as well. And yes. as a mom of two, I know, crazy woman. And then Stacy's got, as you said, how many different Diplomas and degrees and endeavors and things happening and Deke's got a bunch of things happening and I've and he's been. male too so you throw him in there. Well, we did. We didn't want it to be and as much as as much as I love hanging out with the girls. I really wanted this to showcase uh, all sides of this. Yeah, all sides of discussion and the male perspective on dining is so different than females. Is it? Oh, it is. Yeah. Well, we just prior <laughs> yeah, and I made sure like when we did a, a girls in the industry episode. Um, I guess that was about a month or so ago. I specifically chose the date to make sure that D could be there. Okay. I didn't want to do a show about women in the industry without having a guy there mm. to sort of put his two cents in. It wasn't just me though. You also had another two female guests. I did. It was you and the girls. Yeah, yeah. It was, so it was me versus what five. Oh, you handled but yourself. It, you know, like no, no. It, was, it wasn't. It wasn't even. It was. It was great. It was, no, it was, and then we wanted to have be able to uh, share stories with you yeah. so that you could actually see what was happening and because he actually worked in the industry as well it's, with Cynthia it, as well yeah and he worked with Cynthia at one time yeah. so mm -hmm. it was uh it was kind of a neat experience to sort of hang out yeah. together yeah absolutely. so from your perspective do you, <laughs> you say that like um as a as a male dining is different how is it different there's there's different I think there's there's different etiquettes that you have to watch out for and you're so as a customer or as a as a customer so, yeah, I, I think so. Well, I mean, and you have to approach situations differently as well. I mean, when you're uh, when you're a server as well, right? right? I mean, you clearly can't come across as you come across as, as charming. I mean, you represent the restaurant when you're, right. you know, um, uh, but you can't come across as flirty because there's a creep factor there. I mean, but but <laughs> tight women, pants, open shirts. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, but I mean, obviously there's a different right. end of the spectrum. So I mean, in regards like that, and when you're dining as well too. And there's an old saying that, you know, especially when you're on a first date, you treat the server like you treat your mother. Oh. Yeah. So oh, I mean, yeah, that's a, that is a really big deal, by the way. Yeah. I've heard a lot of women tell me that, that after they go out for dinner with a guy for the first time, depending on how he behaves in the restaurant, can make or break it's that second date. So true. It's so <laughs> so nothing but nice 
Christ you and serving you and etc. Right? Right. Yeah. So how how many people do you think know that or actually put that into an actual real situation? Do you think that I think that's not not many See, people know that. You know, there's also another saying is that you know, <laughs> when, when you're serving you learn to really hate people. <laughs> And you, in, in some in some in some regards, because you're watching, you, right? You see all kinds, and you have to be nothing but polite and constantly smiling and constantly, you know. There's there's that effort in there too. Um, oh, you look good. You want to see? Well, I'm just thinking the dining industry, going out to eat, is the time where you see sometimes the best of people mm. and the worst of people, yeah. right? So either they're going above and beyond to, you know, kind of be nice to other people, be courteous, be generous, or on the other side, it's a completely different experience where, you know, they've been having to be forced to be nice all day, and then they go for drinks, and now all of a sudden they get to... They get a little lazy. And they get lazy, and they get to, you know, berate the person and snap their fingers, and uh, it's sometimes it's just yeah. a release. It's not because they're a bad person. So experienced people working in the industry know how to just sort of brush it off right interesting i just thought of a podcast episode for you guys and i'll share it later okay <laughs> i mean and, and vice versa it doesn't have to be in a restaurant i mean it could be tim horns you know mm -hmm. you're, you're the front line serving people their morning coffee in the day not everyone's in a good mood till they get their morning coffee in the day and after waiting 10 15 minutes in tim horns lineup right you know, being, yeah i mean there's there's that too right I mean, yeah there's that window to make or like break that day like if that if that person taking your order like is right. completely rude to you, right. then that's gonna throw you all off. So you have right? that problem in minimum wage positions as well. You know uh, whether whether a cashier at McDonald's, whether there's that courtesy um, meant that there's that that person's job is meant to like make you happy to serve you. Yeah. Right. I mean, but some people really take that for for granted. Whether you're in tomorrow's lineup, but I've seen it. I've seen people get. Uh, 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 vocally aggressive, you know, in a Tim Hortons, in a McDonald's lineup, just the same. Right. I mean, so, yeah. Did you see that video with that girl that basically like threw the guy to the ground in the McDonald's in I Ottawa? Did. No. I uh, okay. I may or may not have shared it on my personal page, but I'm now going to have to go and post it. It was crazy. It, big she girl dropped. just, yeah, she dropped him. I don't know what the background story was, but all I know is it was a McDonald's in Ottawa. Oh, so, so be wary. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's an example of someone just. I mean, uh, I, I don't know the situation behind that story, but I mean, sometimes any any human would just have enough, right? Right. So Stephanie, okay, so you started the podcast, and at the, around the same time, because I had you on the show, you were probably maybe my third or fourth guest when I first. That's when I the just show. started the podcast. Yes, and it was just me. It was just you. And you had recently started your Secret Foodies too, which you just mm -hmm. shut down. Yes, it'll be finishing actually. I've stopped collecting the surveys locally, and I'll be posting the last of the results this Thursday, which is the Upscale Casual uh, Top 3. And then after that, I'm basically gonna leave the Facebook page open for people to still to showcase or share what they're eating and where, you know, if a new place is opening, that kind of thing, just for pe foodies to kind of share all the positive stuff happening. So when you created that, what was your intention and did you get what you wanted out of it? I wanted, first of all, I wanted to uh, have a place where you could share good news stories about restaurants and I can control the venting a little bit. That was part of it. I also promised restaurants, I wanted to get some data back from locals because mm. for some silly reason in the city, we do not have any, I wanna say any media at all, print media or otherwise, that has any kind of restaurant review, which anonymously, right. secret shopper, or anything like that. So there's no, not a lot of ways for restaurants to get feedback unless it happens to be some locals venting online, or you get tourists that are coming through the city of Sudbury and they're posting uh, something on Yelp or on their Facebook page or something like that. And again, those are usually people who've only been there once. And the key to success in any local restaurant is repeat business from their own locals yes. and support. So to be able to get some kind of data to provide them, to showcase, uh, here's, here's your busier days, here's where you got the best feedback, lunch service is your, is your best thing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's even been some shout outs uh, to giving praise to certain employees. So any kind of feedback that I was getting, I was getting both good and bad mm -hmm. from all the restaurants, but I never posted any of the bad stuff. 
the Cruise page. That's only for for me to tabulate and then to create reports for the restaurants. It's really as good they is, is the rest of it was a positive. Yeah, and I wanted it to be a positive, but I found after a year, I was noticing that there wasn't a whole lot of change. The same foodies were visiting the same places over and over again. So the actual top three results were not changing all that much. Do you think that that's a common trend for, I guess, us specifically in Sudbury, that if we like a place that we just continue to go back and we don't expand that kind of culinary we do. palette? I think everybody has their go-tos. Yes. A lot of times it's based on location. Mm -hmm. Whether it's on the way to or from work, on the way to or from school, uh, close by your house, something like that. A uh, friend or family works there. There's usually a reason why you keep going back to the same place or it just happens to be that they're consistent. Consistency is key. Mm -hmm. So that if you go to, you know that every time you go to this one restaurant, uh, it's always going to be serving you the, the meal that you like and the service that you mm -hmm. prioritize, mm -hmm. you will keep going back. I can think of three places off the top of my head. That, Same here. Yeah. Yes, and but that's... Go, and every, go, go, which ones? No. <laughs> you want to say them? Oh, yeah. Okay, I'll say them. Go for it. Um, Tuco's Tacos. Yes, that's on mine. Uh, respect. Yes, that's on mine, too. And p &Ms. Okay. There are others, but those are the ones that come to my head. I was, that, I was just thinking respect and uh, uh, red paint. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and my third would be the alibi room. Okay. Oh, alibi room's new to me. I haven't gone there yet. you got to go. Yeah. Oh, I know. Oh, I'm planning to go. I've already been messaging them or whatever because yeah. I'm arranging. There'll be um, other announcements. Yeah. <laughs> the yeah. all of my room. I'm working no, with them I'm on something. I'm excited about it. I'm excited about it. Dan, uh, Dan also, uh, he's, he's the bartender there. And he runs, uh, I don't, I'm not sure if his role right in place, but I believe he runs the place. Uh, he, uh, uh, um, uh, Dan Draper, he, uh, I worked with him at Curious Times. Actually, I was one of the first friends that he made when he moved, uh, moved to Canada. And this is about four or five years back, and he's just a strappy man. Like he's 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 sharp. This guy's sharp, and you, to watch him work and work behind the bar and to see the magic he does. I mean, uh, he he's he's the real deal, and and we're we're lucky to have that separate, especially it, on downtown on Friday. Yeah, it's a different atmosphere over there. Yeah. Only been once. Yeah. See, more than me. Past my bedtime. <laughs> well, that's why it's only been one. <laughs> and it was on my birthday. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly it. I, I, I'm not to mention I'm not home that much. But when I am, I mean, if we go for dinner, the idea of going out for drinks after dinner, as much as I love the idea of it, yeah, I don't function well that later at night. I have to be, it's got to be well planned in advance. <laughs> and that's usually my thing when I go to uh, the Red Fang, so uh, we'll, we'll have dinner at our yeah. start. And then by the time we're done, you just hop over. setting up, yeah. you're hopping over. And, the staff's always awesome, and Rob Gregory, and he's always there. And, yeah, and that's you know, the one he's thing. He's always I'm... there, and he's so present, and he's amazing to everybody. And it, 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 I'm proud to have that in our downtown center. Absolutely. Community. That's the one thing I recognized for our um, restaurateurs in a Sudbury is seeing the owners there when you're there. Mm -hmm. And knowing that, like, you know, Rob has served me several times. He doesn't have to. No. But he does. Yeah. And that's not the only place that does it, but like when you recognize that, like you appreciate that and you want to go back because you know at the end of the day, like the meal that you ate, like was specifically for you yes. from the owner yeah. and the money that for the meal is going back into the restaurant to continue the service yes. and provide that. Absolutely. And I think that's why, like, you know, like I mentioned, and this is just my own opinion, Tuco's has been extremely successful too because the owners are there, the, it's consistent, the staff is great. Uh, and they just put out a good meal every single time. Absolutely. I agree. Not to mention margaritas on the patio are pretty cute. Too. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, I didn't want to go there, but that's the reason why I go there. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I also eat when I'm there, but yes, yeah. with margaritas, good yeah. too. That's right. But that's extremely important to note about these restaurants in our local downtown core or anywhere in Sudbury is that consistency and to see the faces that are have made it happen, have grown. I mean, it hasn't... Yes, respect and places like that has been around for you know several years, but that's not to say they've been through their challenges. But as long as we continue to support it, like it's always going to be that way. Absolutely. As soon as we've seen a decline in like service or whatever, um, then we know like something else is kind of going on. But that consistency has remained throughout every like. I mean, it's there's been Rob's had his challenges. Yes. Obviously. Big time. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Major hurdles. Like, but he's like picked himself back up and the food has always been like, you never walk out of there and think like, what a crappy meal. It's like never, like you can probably survey every single person in Subway and I'm confident that you'll never. Yeah. 
And he's probably served you like, you know, seven out of ten times. Yeah. Well, it's not because that's his baby. Right. 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 And, and that makes, yeah, his passion, and that's what makes it. But one of those things that you were talking about having to do with the dedication of the owners mm -hmm. and the things that go on behind the scenes, I think that's one of the reasons that I really wanted to curtail people's need to vent about one bad experience. Right. Because you don't know what has been happening on the behind the scenes. You don't know what's going on in that kitchen. You don't know what's going on with management. You don't know what's going on with that particular server that day. Mm -hmm. And to take the time to go on to a social media platform and do this long rant about this one time that right. something went so bad yeah. for you, yeah. uh, you don't realize the damage you're doing to that business because then all of a sudden there's other people who are seeing that saying, well, I'm not going to go there. Well, they're not necessarily going to have the same experience as you. So I always prefer to focus on the more positive aspects of what a restaurant is doing uh, cheer them on right because it is hard work um, and it's one of those things that I think sometimes people take it for granted there's a new um, uh, hashtag started I just posted it early this morning I don't know if you saw it it's a uh, something about tip the bill oh yes tip the uh to the bill challenge or something? Something like that. Are you matched with the bill? Yes, the whatever your, yes, oh, eggs, it, I know. <laughs> That's like great news for servers. It is, so it's a new challenge. Uh, so I mean, one of those things that if I'm gonna mention it to Norman, he'll probably laugh at me, because our bills are never small. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think that we're going out later tonight, so uh, I'll see if he's willing to do the challenge or not. Oh, Norm. Oh, you have to uh -oh. follow us and find us out where you're going, right? <laughs> Put your phone down his curve. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, oh, I won't tell him about the challenge until later. Post. Yeah, yeah, ex exactly. We're going to cut to a small break right now, but uh, as I mentioned earlier, check us out on Stephanie Pichet's Facebook page. We are live. We're not going to cut that out so you can see, see all the behind the scenes. <laughs> anything that goes on. And we'll be back talking more um, food, wine, travel, podcast, and what else you got going on. Sounds we'll good. Back on CPLU 96.7. Yay! That's great. That was good. Did you have about five minutes? Uh, a song? A song. Is it a French song again? No, it's not. <laughs> it's what? Classified. Oh, I love them. Okay. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 but classified. He's from the East Coast. Yes. 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 And when, sorry, when he first started, one of his first songs, it was more like a band type thing. One of his big ones was uh, Feeling Good. I don't remember. No, you caught me. I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna look it up. Didn't he uh, rewrite the national anthem? I don't know. In the University of Canada, is that classified? Who did that? I don't know. I think so. You guys are asking me questions. I don't know. <laughs> I believe it was. Oh my gosh! It's like the challenge of the phones. <laughs> Feeling fine. It was with Jordan, J R D N, Jordan. Okay, yeah, yeah. And classified. Ooh, what happened to that? That's why. You ever heard that song? I was actually going to share it on. It's an old song. It's really cool. Looks like I'm going to I'm going to play it because no one's, no one's going to hear it on the show, right? Well, just on our live, but not on the radio now. Love this song. If this is if this doesn't get you up in the morning. Here now, I got you. Okay. Classified O Canada. Like this has nothing to do with what we're talking about. I can play this on the next one. Yeah. How about that my special request? Okay. That's cool. Man. Yeah, I never heard it. It's like it's like this old school. Yeah. Back in my back in the nineties, driving down Young Street, Toronto. Yeah, you gotta check out Ill Canada. That was actually a ring. I put that as a ringtone on my phone. Did you really? Back in the day. Yes. Oh, you're right. Ill Canada. I can't play those explicit. Yeah. I have to put that on our show. <laughs> right. We don't have music on our show. I was just thinking, maybe one song, one song. An episode of it. We'll see. Get Alex to play some tunes for us. There we go. 
Okay. So three minutes with J Busy. Oh, <laughs> that was explosive. Okay. So not the remix. <laughs> oh, I'd love to have control of that. I got a song. What song? Sweet Charity by Mr. Bumble. No. <laughs> <laughs> she just automatically went. Mm. Yeah. That's the song that fooled us, but. Can you swear to that? Yeah. Are you sure? Because, I mean, you already no. dropped the A word. A <laughs> <Just A> word? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> A word? <laughs> Gee, I was just looking up songs about dinner. Just that thought. You know that there's a song from Robert Palmer called TV Dinners? No. You're back. Listen, we're back listening to 96.7 FM Boss Talk. We're in the studio. We can't even. <laughs> Weird Al. Good Al. I'm in the studio today with Stephanie Piche. Hey. hey. <laughs> Sorry, I'm looking up songs that have to do with the word dinner. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm sorry. Okay. Sorry. There's a, there's a lot <laughs> of song titles with the word. The Beastie Boys did a song called Five Piece Chicken Dinner back in 89. Did you know that? No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we're live on my Facebook page, which we didn't cut out, so you can catch anything we talked about during that segment. And also live on Stephanie Pichet's Facebook page, so you can catch some behind the scenes. Um, during the commercial, which is why I'm laughing, is uh, we were talking about Classified. I just played a song, and then Stephanie uh, found, another song. found another song. And then she was looking for dinner songs, because we were just talking about food and wine and travel. Um, and then we just just talked about this new tip the bill challenge, and uh, she's challenging Norm tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're putting it out on the radio, so he has no choice. Oh. He's gonna be like, man, I'm going to McDonald's now. <laughs> I think it would make a great post. I think it would make a great post. It doesn't matter where you go. It could be like it doesn't have to be anything crazy. Sending all positive energies into the industry. That's right. I think it's great. I think we all should make, not just Norm, oh, yeah. or maybe we should accompany oh, you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, so you can add to our bill. <laughs> yeah, that'll go over well. I need to eat too. <laughs> but maybe we should all do that at some point. I think it's a nice gesture. I think that servers uh, get underappreciated very often. And I think this is kind of a fun little twist to... Yeah. Uh, sort of show your appreciation, especially if you frequent the same place all the time, mm -hmm. like we were talking about earlier, that we tend to go to the same places all the time, you get to know some of the staff there, so just to be able to say thank you that way once in a while I think is greatly appreciated. So why do you think that servers are underappreciated? Most of the time it's for because it's by people who don't, have, don't work in the industry or never have and don't know what it is like and, and they assume it's an easy job and they're making too much money. It's surprising how the attitudes out there are. Oh, they may, you have no idea. I know how much money they make in tips and blah, blah, blah. And so don't feel sorry. Like I'm always hearing comments like that. Mm -hmm. so, but, you, but you don't know what their job actually entails. Right. So you should never judge. Right. And also, I think it's a reflection. If like something goes wrong, it's their fault. Right. So if, like, say, the kitchen's late or something happens. Which is absolutely ridiculous. Right. Like it's the server's fault because your steak wasn't cooked. Right? Right. Crazy. Not true at all. It's no. the server's fault if, I don't know. Okay. If they were, if they forgot a plate in the kitchen and it sat under the heat, under the heat lamp for too long. Right. right, or if they forgot yeah. a drink or brought the wrong drink or mixed the wrong drink or whatever the case. Correct. Then, okay, right away. But then that, that stuff can be corrected right away. Like, it's not, a, like, end of the world. But I think, like, going out to eat is a luxury, right, no matter where you go. Mm -hmm. So we treat that as like that's an experience. So if anything goes wrong along the way, we automatically want to blame somebody else, which that's, is not. The way. No, and it doesn't help anybody. It doesn't help the restaurant either, and it doesn't help your own dining experience. I mean, especially in a small town like this, you're going to be going back. Right. Right. And I don't think. Do you think that anybody can be a server? <laughs> uh, everyone can. Everyone can at different capabilities and at different levels um, with the right a different style and with the right training. That's part of it, having to do with training. Well, but I think attitude. it right. is, and I think just like you'd be serving someone in your home, everyone has th that ability, right? So if someone's at your place and you're planning to 
um, share dinner with them, you're essentially serving them just right. like you would in a restaurant. So there's not really much of a difference. And as long as you keep that in mind that somebody went to the trouble of getting stuff to serve you, there's always extra things that are involved in it. And not to mention, you got to keep in mind that if someone is serving you dinner at your house, it's like they're serving dinner at your house and five of your neighbors at the same time, mm. right? Just the amount of tables and everything else that they have to manage right. and all the requests and things like that. So having a culinary, or having a catering business, you've managed, you've taught classes, um, and both of you are involved in food in some capacity, so you all, you have that kind of diverse um, skills that can bring to the table, which brings me to my next point of what you got going on now, because mm -hmm. You're obviously bored. <laughs> yeah, nothing going on. <laughs> Both of you, mm -hmm. obviously bored. So you have to take on something else with your traveling the world and drinking wine and documenting it and uh, got nothing else to do. So now you have something else that you've created. Yeah, I think, well, I mean, I've created, okay, so let me back it up a little bit. I was teaching classes for a long time, mm -hmm. uh, still am. Uh, just did a bachelor party this past weekend, so it was a lot of fun. Uh, what I wanted to do is I, because I've been meeting people working in wine, beer, food industries everywhere, mm -hmm. and I've kept in contact with a lot of these people, and there's a lot of information and things out there they want to share, uh, but not everybody has time to be teaching classes. Mm -hmm. So here in Sudbury, uh, one of the things I'm working with the city of Sudbury through Sudbury Tourism, really trying to work on our culinary tourism strategy and getting that off the ground to basically promote Sudbury as a culinary destination. Mm -hmm. I think it already is, but we need to tell everybody outside of Sudbury what we have to offer. So we're, as we're working with that, one of the topics that kept coming up had to do with skills training. And somebody who's working in the restaurant industry, maybe while they're going to school or if they're doing it full time as a career, they don't necessarily have the time or the place to go in and learn new things mm -hmm. or to upgrade their skills to uh, take their career the next level and there's a lot of people who don't necessarily work in the industry that want to learn some of the same things that people in the restaurant and hospitality industry is learning right so I wanted to create kind of like these short-term classes so not just my one classes that I was doing not just um, standard cooking classes but I wanted to have it more specific mm -hmm. so if you um, so Stacy from our podcast uh, is going to be doing classes such as French macaros and she's gonna do a class on uh, sugar art and sugar flowers for those who wanna do their own beautiful take cake decorations. Somebody else, uh, Cynthia, is going to be doing classes specifically geared towards weddings and events. Um, that's why I got Deke coming in. Um, I've convinced him to uh, share some of his um, Arabic culinary uh, background using recipes or some of the stories behind uh, where those recipes came from and how you can implement those flavors into your own cooking at home. Right, and Deke, you actually have like a product that you sell, right. um, which is a little bit different as well. So how has that growth of your own business affected, I guess, your overall lifestyle? Like, cause it now, like at the beginning you said that like it's in Smith's, so it's, you're expanding out. Um, so how is like, you started small and now you're growing. Um, how's it going? <laughs> it's, it's, it's going really well. Um, the, the, the biggest challenge that I faced uh, uh, is uh, is my expiration date, my, my shelf life, because I put zero preservatives in my product. Right. Right. And so I had to get really crafty. I, I realize now that um, that that on a much larger scale is probably not where I'm heading because I don't want to go that direction. Okay. I want to stay true to uh, to what I started. Um, so that means getting a little bit craftier with concepts. So um, as I mentioned before, uh, being I'm very passionate about like doing uh, school breakfast programs, nutrition programs, etc. Working with schools that way and doing fundraisers and uh, keeping it still as big as it can get, but as local as it can get as well. Right. Yeah. So so that's been important to me. Um, I think that's important to step into what you were saying about these classes and teaching is touching on all those different areas, whether it is a service or a product, and telling those real life stories for people that either. A, are in it or want to get into it, but can expect that these challenges can happen, but how to like continue to go on yeah, with it, because it's right. not easy. No, and that's one of the things that I wanted, I didn't want to have professional instructors necessarily. I mean, it's great to have them, mm -hmm. but I wanted it to be more about the people who are, the experience is what I was looking for. So when I'm doing my, 
be doing classes geared toward people who want to either expand into the catering business or want to start a small catering business on their own. And I'm going to be saying, here's all, here's all the do's and don't do's based on what I did, what worked and what didn't. Right. Um, how, to, you know, how to set things up the background. So I want to be able to share those things and that's why I'm bringing in people. So I want to have, I'm going to have somebody um, coming in and teaching the basics on a commercial kitchen. Right, how the equipment works, uh, how to use the grill, how to do some basic uh, line cook duties without having to go take a full program. So that if you've ever had the itch to go and work in the commercial kitchen, uh, but you're not sure that you have the skills or the confidence to be able to do it, being able to take a class like that might be just the little nudge that you need to get your foot in the door. Right, because the the food industry, like there's so many moving parts to it. It's not just a go in and make a sandwich and hope for the best that somebody likes it. It's like how all of those components work together to ensure that that sandwich is like the best sandwich that you've ever served and eaten, right? Yeah, there's a, there's always a lot of parts to it. Um, there's always um, kind of a dance that happens in that kitchen in the back of, you know. Can you show us? No. <laughs> dance was sort of like this, uh, you know, visual term that I was trying to use. But. Um, everyone kind of plays a role, and it's a very big team atmosphere. It's not yes. always a one-man show or one-woman show. And But one of those things is that each one of those positions in the business has a specific skill set that's required. Mm. So to be able to have these classes that are very geared towards specific techniques or geared towards just um, even somebody at home who wants to take their, you know, their grilling skills up a whole new level and wants to get to restaurant worthy and show off and his friends. We this these classes are not going to be for industry professionals only. Okay. They are also geared to just general interest. Anybody who wants to come in and learn how to uh, cook a proper meal for themselves. Yeah. <laughs> so I should how to that. how to cook their own steak at home and uh, I don't know how to do that. Yeah. Well I have a blog post on that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> how, uh, yeah. uh, cooking a steak, um, I'm trying to think of something I want to do an entire class on risotto. Because mm -hmm. I think that once you learn the basics oh, I'm gonna be in on that one. Yeah and once you learn the basics of of how to do it, then you can start playing, right? The technique's the same, it's just a matter of playing in with ingredients and flavors and things like that. So we also have the other components of beverages, like how to pour wine correctly. Yes, so there's gonna be, besides just the wine tasting classes, although they did two cool things, so I'm gonna branch off here for a second. <laughs> so the first one, and I'm just in time for the back to school season, especially those who have never worked in a restaurant or a banquet service before, there's gonna be a full day server training um, so uh, smart serve training Sudbury mm -hmm. uh, is going to be pairing up with me on that one for a full day. It's going to be a Sunday from like 10 to 3 or 10 to 4. Uh, September the 9th, I believe. You can check the Legacy Service Academy Facebook page or website for that. And then the, um, so it'll teach you uh, basic for wine service, uh, some of the do's and don'ts, uh, basic server etiquette, uh, some of the things just to give you some confidence when you go and apply for the job in the fall, mm -hmm. as well as uh, lunch will be provided. Care of mm. uh, Light lunch. Don't don't think this is not a buffet type thing. But during the lunch, I also am going to bring in a local restaurant servers to almost do like a Q and A panel, so that you you can actually ask someone who's working in the restaurant industry of things to watch out for, some tips from them. That's awesome. Yeah. So it's going to be a fun full day of just getting you ready to go work in the industry. I feel like I have so many ideas and thoughts running through my head now because as you may or may not know, I just dived into the service industry and food industry um, at Timberwolf. And I don't have any experience in food, in restaurant, I'm learning as I go. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna take that, and I'm gonna take that, <laughs> I'm gonna go to that class. I gotta, gotta make sure the, the yeah, I gotta make sure the servers take that. Um, because at the end of the day, like it, it all, like DQ said in the beginning, it all reflects back on the brand, the restaurant, um, because it's the people that are putting out that service, and that's with a huge, huge reflection. Mm -hmm. So you, you have to know what you're doing. You do, and I love this. I yeah. love that you, you stayed true to the legacy brand too. Yes, I brought back the old logo. Yeah, I figured might as well just uh, bring back something that's kind of recognizable for yeah. people in Sudbury. Oh, it's relevant. It is, and we are trying to create a legacy, right, of culinary expertise in the city, and not necessarily just culinary as well. So we're going back to the beverages. Um, my wine classes, I want to make them more accessible, so I'm cutting back on as much food as I used to serve with them. Mm -hmm. So now it's more focused on wine. And the cool thing is I'm going to be Skyping in winemakers from all over the world. So I've actually already got two lined up for the fall. 
I know that I've got a Niagara winemaker uh, is going to be Skyping in for the intro to wine class. That is on September the 12th. Oh my goodness, that's, I don't have my schedule memorized in front of me, but the intro to wine class, you'll actually hear from a winemaker on the winemaking process and what makes our uh, Ontario wine regions unique. And then I'm also going to be having um, a winemaker from California. Mm. We'll be Skyping in one of the October classes as well. So those kind of things will be popping up here and there. I want to bring in more guests that are relevant to the discussion. Not to meant, I mean, yes, I can pour you wine. You can listen to me talk about wine for two and a half hours. Okay. <laughs> but I think how how interesting is it going to be that you'll actually be able to do Q&A right. directly with the people who are making the wines that are you're being served that day. So that's kind of what I wanted to bring into that next level without having to go to the wine regions. And it also gives these winemakers a chance to kind of showcase their product a little bit more and give you the story behind it. And will we see some sampling of Deke's food? What's that? <laughs> will we see some sampling yeah. of Deke's food? Yeah, I'm sure we will. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. I think he's yes. working on um, a class, is an Arabic cooking class. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, we were talking about putting together something to do about bringing your product to market. So it'll be basically following in his footsteps. So uh, Zara Small Batch Hummus will just basically be your guide yeah. uh, if you have a particular product at home that you want to launch into the uh, culinary universe. Mm. I'm living with man, I'll help you out. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you know everyone involved has that unique experience to bring to the table. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> Bring to the dinner table. Okay, she's being very subtle, but Michelle's also going to be doing. I begged and pleaded with her, <laughs> so uh, there will be. Yes, I'm bribed. Uh, I'll tell you what I bribed her with. It's usually in a bottle, but I'm going to uh, get her to come in and do some uh, social media and um, PR tips for uh, restaurants and other hospitality businesses that basically either are just starting out or just want to take their business to the next level. There's so many things changing on an ongoing basis that. I can't even keep up with all the different trends that are up there, and you are the pro, my dear. Well, it's hard to keep up, and you yes. literally have to pay attention, um, because it's not just a one-size-fits-all for, for all businesses. It's like, you have to know who you're talking to and who you're serving at the end of the day. Yes. Absolutely. So, thank you for bringing me on board, and actually, she didn't have to bribe me. <laughs> she can always come and drink with me in my patio anytime. That's right. <laughs> That's the bride. That's the, Th that's those the bride. are our team meetings. <laughs> You're working for me. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's going to want to work for me now. <laughs> I won't tell you everyone your address. <laughs> so many people already know where I live. Who are we kidding? <laughs> so that's exciting. So when's the first day of launch for like C Academy? Uh, well, the first class is going to be the server training class, and that's on the Sunday, I believe, September the 9th. So I'll call it in on the date before I came here. It was a last minute planning. Uh, so that'll be September the 9th. Uh, there's probably about four or five classes that are up now, now for registration on Where the can website. Find that? They can find it on the Legacy Service Academy Facebook page. You can also go directly to legacyserviceacademy.ca. You'll see the link there as well. Uh, .ca.com, both, both domains, so it doesn't matter. That's right. uh, there's also a link in there. If you have any questions, you can email us directly if you have questions about that. Uh, so any instructors, you'll see their instructor profiles. Uh, you can actually click the links directly through Facebook and register and buy your tickets there. Um, that's basically going to be it. Every class is going to be, even if it's just a standard seminar or something, uh, we are going to always have a perfect hospitality um, ambiance, meaning we're always going to have you know, uh, coffees and teas and uh, every once in a while we're going to have a little treat that someone's going to make and bring to share. And, mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's always going to be like a light snack or something like that happening as well. So we really want this to be sort of a, a, an enjoyable um, enjoyable environment for learning and we are going to keep classes fairly small. So I think that for most classes, I know all of my one classes are going to be kept at 10 people unless it's going to be a private event and then we have to change the, change the venue and discuss that further. And then uh, for some of the other ones, there'll be some special events, and those will be capped at 20. I believe the server training is going to be capped at 20 as well. Okay. So um, all things food, wine, I want to ask both of you, what is your favorite meal? Deke? I just had this conversation with a good friend of mine. The other day. <laughs> but it, but it, it was a death row question. It was like your last meal. Yeah, so ever. what was it? Uh, I think we both agreed on sushi. Really? Really? I'm surprised at you, mister. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think that's what it would be. So last last, La last yeah, meal? Last meal, like, all time. Would be like sushi. sushi. I think so. Wow. Huh. 
I mean, I love sushi too, but hmm, I don't know. Hmm. All right. Interesting. Does sushi, <laughs> sushi <laughs> from anywhere? Sushi by a particular sushi chef? I don't, I don't know. know. I, I thought you were going to say generally, like steak, potatoes, like this like hearty, like <laughs> manly food <laughs> yeah. you're trying to get at. I I fully stereotyped. Steak, maybe. <laughs> maybe. With blue cheese crust. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so which one is it? Sushi or steak? He said sushi. You got to tell me okay. the sushi. Sushi, sushi. That's my answer. And what would be your drink? My last drink. Manhattan. Mm. From the Alibi Room? Yeah, especially for <laughs> yeah. Big shout out to the alibi. Yeah. yeah. Especially if I was like in Texas, because then I would have to wait for it to get delivered. Oh. <laughs> so it buy time. Right? right? So where is it? Uh, <laughs> Stephanie. Okay. <laughs> oh my God. How are you going to top Texas? that? <laughs> How am I going to top that? Uh, could I, can I travel for this? Anything. Anything. Okay, I would duplicate, and so funny because as soon as you mentioned that, I all of a sudden I had a visual. So I would go back to, uh, there's a little restaurant that overlooks this bay in Monaco. I know. <laughs> I'm very, it's been very, very specific and very princessy. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, we're not on this. Anymore, right? <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> we're just visualizing. You were. Yeah, do this. Like you said, so. you like said death row. You were on death row. <laughs> so I'm duplicating it. So there I had a beautiful bottle of rose. <laughs> And I had uh, moule frit, which is steamed mussels and white wine. Hey, I'm trying to talk about my food here. <laughs> steamed mussels, steamed mussels uh, with super crispy little frit, and it was a blue cheese. It was a Roquefort cream sauce. What kind of prison is this? I didn't say death row. He said favorite meal. He said death row. Right. Okay. So we got track. That's right. I love it. I'm not doing death row. No. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to answer, even though no one asked me, I'm going to answer mine. As soon as I said last meal, I wasn't thinking death row either, but thank you. But I'm, I'll go with you on this one. If I was on death row, uh, my meal would be Belgian waffles. Yep. Really? Real be Belgian waffles. Ooh, you have a sweet tooth. Oh, yeah. With load that up with whipped cream. I'm lactose intolerant, but I'm going to die anyway. So load it up, ice cream, and fruit. And like I'm not thinking, I'm not saying like two waffles, like stack it. <laughs> Tower of power. Let's do yeah. it and just, just get it in there. Interesting. Yeah. Right. I think I learned a little bit about both of you in that five minutes. Oh, yeah. Actually, interesting. Yeah. See, the sushi it wouldn't have got. Right. Me one and fries. Well. Well. <laughs> <laughs> but interesting that both of our both of our meals included blue cheese. I mean, when you were talking about sushi, if you went to the steak, you wanted the, well, the yeah, blue cheese crust, yeah. and it has a blue cheese cream sauce. That's right. It. That's ah. right. Yeah. 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 I think that blue cheese gets a really bad rap sometimes. It's a comfort thing for me. It's, it's really weird. But when I want my steak, that's that's what I do. Mm -hmm. That's what I, I do. Oh, there's this new, uh, I feel like I'm detouring. There's this new, um, it's called double cream blue. It's like in a half round at yeah. the grocery store. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we just melt, we smeared that on steaks. Mm. A couple weeks ago, Amazing. just as is. I could literally sit here and talk to both of you all day. Um, we only have a few minutes, but I have a question I want to ask now. Yeah. Um, again, this can go to both of you. What is your best travel tip that you can give? Us? <laughs> uh, because I haven't traveled alone, I would say my big travel tip is travel with someone you really enjoy spending time with. Yeah. Mm. Uh, only because it doesn't matter where that location is. Um, everyone, everyone who knows me knows that my favorite traveling buddy is my hubby, my hubby. And it's partly because we are not just husband and wife, but we are basically best friends. And we actually have a good time when we're traveling. Mm. We enjoy the same things, going to the same places. Perfect. Our priorities are similar. Uh, the, only, the only difference has to do with the fact that in the morning was on vacation, I like to take my time. Right, have coffee, usually breakfast, and he has a you know on banana schedule. coffee, and no, he's off um, going. But aside from that, we both prioritize our travel destinations, things like that, differently. But I, I've also traveled with people who don't have the same priorities as I do, and they want something out of their vacation, and I want something out of mine. Right. And then it ends up being this big. Someone's always giving up something yeah. on their vacation. Right. So I really think giving some consideration or planning ahead if you're going to be traveling with someone you've never traveled before, mm -hmm. really take that into consideration about what 
they're going to be like traveling with and plan yourself accordingly. Yeah, deep. You know what? I have so many different things racing through my head, like different tips and etc. I mean, I'm more the type to pack light than you just go. Mm, yeah, but you're a guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just, I think it was Stephanie nailed it. Just go with someone you really enjoy. You know, right. travel, unless you're going alone. And that's that's the ring as well. I, I need to try. need to travel alone. That's, Tra- my, that's a bucket list. Traveling thing. alone, I think everyone should do that yes. once. That's a great, once. great tip. Yeah. And I think the, the traveling lightly is actually a really good tip. I really I wish I could. Right. Yeah. Girl problems. Right. Like all the way, and Fair then stuff and shoes, and then you end up bringing too much, and you're like, I could have just not. Naturally, uh, I, I just got into into motorcycling too, mm-hmm. right? So I'm gonna be exercising a lot. I'm going pack into it very well. Well, yeah, because you can't fit anything on there. No, exactly. I'm I'm, I'm looking for. Oh, you can talk to Norm. He's got some some yeah. tricks around that. <laughs> okay. that maybe, guy, maybe that, that guy knows. So what he knows. He does not pack light, so he knows how to get around that. <laughs> All right. Well, we got to wrap this up. We're uh, we're coming to the end here. Thank you guys so much for coming in and chatting well, with me. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. This was fun. I hope that uh, everyone enjoyed the episode as much as I did. I had a lot of fun. My cheeks hurt, <laughs> and I feel the tears coming down from my eyeballs. Um, check out Legacy Catering. Check out... Not Legacy oh, Catering. Oh, I'm sorry. Legacy Service Academy. <laughs> I am not catering anymore. No, but people still ask. They still do. I know. I still get requests. I know. <laughs> right. Check it out. If it's something that you think that you want to be involved in, check out the different classes. Um, there's a ton of experienced prof- professionals, but like just people who have been there, done that, are doing it. And have like, a passion. And have a passion, a true passion to share with you of the things to do, maybe not to do. And they will share their challenges with you along the way to make sure that maybe you don't repeat those same mistakes and you can have more of a, a more flowing experience of, I'll say flowing because wine, <laughs> well, wine will be flowing. Wine will be, <laughs> some of the class, don't come to all the classes thinking they'll be wine. <laughs> I wish I could. <laughs> right. So check it out um, and check out what they're both up to and check out Flying for Flavor weekly, right? That's still yep, every Saturday morning and... I will be uploading the audio of this particular show as well as bonus podcasts there this week. Amazing. So if you're going to catch the, the um, post record, I guess, the, the after show, I don't know, whatever. Anyways, they're going to end it there because I don't know what to talk about <laughs> anymore. Anyways, I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for tuning in to Boss Talk this week on CKLU 96.7. And we'll see you next, ta- or next week, same day, same place. Channel. Same channel. Yeah. Have a great day. Bye. Daddy, you can shut her down. See you guys later. Do that. What do I press? What do I press? Oh, I don't know. There's a stop button. No, there isn't. I have to make one by pressing it on the screen. On the bottom right? No. On the bottom right says done. Oh. Bye, guys.